Welcome to 50 Ways to Succeed at Work, where you hear stuff about ways to succeed even the most well-intentioned colleagues, advisors, careers officers and HR departments may never get around to mentioning. This is episode 27, Winner, Not Whiner, Grumblers Seldom Come Out on Top. While reading the latest report on the organization's customer experiences, Dimitri looks up to see Gerald S. hovering beside him. It's his third visit today. It's not fair, Dimmy. Don't you agree? Oh, look, I can see you feel angry about something. Look, let me put this report on customer experiences away first. Right, now, Jerry, what's not fair? Well, the way they keep changing the deadlines. How do they expect us to cope? Well, I guess deadlines are always subject to change these days. Things happen so fast in this business. Well, you know, it's easy for some. We get better projects than me. Our team leader Nolan has it in for me, I swear. How do you mean, have it in for you? Is he mistreating you or something? Nobody cares how I feel or how much pressure I'm under. Have you talked to Nolan about this? If only. No. Why? What good would that do? I don't think he cares about me. Look, to be frank, Jerry, I don't see it that way. Although your concerns are real. As I see it, if you hate your job, maybe it's time to move on. Anyway, look, I need to finish reading this for my meeting this afternoon. We'll have to discuss this again, Jerry. Thanks for dropping by. Ugh, I must make a note to find a way to deal with Jerry's victim mentality. I think I'll discuss it with HR. Now let's relate Dimitri's experience with Gerald S. to your situation at work. Whiners like Gerald can be destructive, making things look worse. They focus only on their problems. Whining becomes a habit. Soon everything seems terrible. Each situation a disaster. When dealing with whiners, people tend to have three main questions. How do I deal with a whiny co-worker? How do I avoid sounding like a victim at work? How do I professionally complain about a moaning co-worker? Whiners are addicted to me. They're out for themselves and are no collaborators. They always need pep talks and a high maintenance. Dealing with these people can be a pain, yet like Gerald S., they are often in severe distress. You can't always expect to unravel the cause. This may stretch back to early childhood when whining brought results. Or they may have suffered more than their fair share of setbacks from ill health, depression or frequent rejections. As Dimitri did, commiserate with them and show empathy, then move on quick by changing the subject. Depending on what they're complaining about, suggest like Dimitri, if you hate this job, perhaps it's time you quit, or I'm sorry you're having such a tough time. Do you need any help finding a solution? Better still ask, what's going well for you this week? If your whiny colleague keeps dumping their negativity on you, explain, look, I'm, I'm swamped right now. Let's talk about this some other time. You might even have to relocate to escape their presence. The second question people have about whiners is how to avoid sounding like a victim at work. The way you do this is to take ownership and responsibility for your own needs and wants. You could be seen as a whiner if you keep blaming others at work. Instead, turn your attention to more positive thoughts and ways of dealing with your problems. For example, be kind to yourself. You only intensify your pain when you whine. Another way is to focus on helping others. Offering kindness is an excellent antidote to whining. So is showing gratitude. It shifts your attention from what you're missing to what you can give. Another way is to focus on helping others through kindness. The third question people tend to be concerned about is how to complain about a moaning co-worker and doing it professionally. It's best to talk directly with the whiner, since this lets them vent without having to get into trouble. In response, try using I statements. I feel this. I wish that. I can't because. These may sound like, I feel unable to help on this. I wish I had more time to chat, but I can't because I must finish this by Friday. With an I statement, you focus on your problem instead of what's wrong with your co-worker. If talking with the whiner seems hazardous or pointless, perhaps it's time to visit the boss. Define the issue as an organizational one, not a personal complaint. Bosses hate dealing with employee squabbles. So what action am I proposing? 
First, check that you're not playing the whiner role yourself without realizing it. Secondly, resist the whiner's tendency to make everything sound damaging and impossible to resolve. And finally, become a winner by helping to resolve the whiner's issue. And the takeaway from all of this, no one loves a whiner. So avoid falling into that role and resist those who peddle negativity. You've been listening to an episode of Andrew's 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. For more episodes, subscribe free to my regular weekly podcasts. You can catch up on past ones at the 50ways.site, where you can also become a foundation member with access to e-learning units, further reading links, and the forum where you can ask questions, share problems, and join a growing community of people who seriously want to succeed at work. Now there's a new book and an audio version called, you guessed it, 50 Ways to Succeed at Work. Buy it at Amazon or the 50ways.site. Unmissable. Thanks for listening and bye for now until next week.